Today I'm in the City of London at Cannon Street Station actually to look at a building whose whole security and safety is based on water. In a way I'm sure you won't expect. And here it is, number 80 Cannon Street. Eighty Cannon Street, or Bush House as it used to be called, is just next to Cannon Street Tube and compared to the newer high-rise buildings of the City of London, this mid-rise older structure is fairly unassuming except for its unusual design. It was completed in 1976 and designed by Ove Arup, now just called Arup Associates a well-known large British design company which had their work cut out as the design of this building is anything but ordinary. At the time the future Jubilee Line extension was planned to run through the City of London and directly under the building before crossing the Thames into South London. So a fundamental planning requirement therefore was to make sure that both the ground floor and the ground under the building be left open and available to build a new underground station sometime in the future. For the designers this ruled out a standard design of a building in this area which normally has a basement sitting on dozens of paths going down maybe 25 to 35 metres into the London clay. They had to come up with something different and cutting edge to have any hope of it being signed off by the authorities. So instead they designed a building to be fully supported just on four giant legs with the ground floor essentially empty which meant that the ground below would be available for excavation and ready for others to come along in the future and build the station and tunnels. By the time I came along to work on the Jubilee Line extension in the 1990s the route had totally changed and now crosses the river a couple of miles away at Westminster so all of these requirements in hindsight were a complete waste of time Anyway, it was a good plan at the time. So these big legs holding everything up are massive and obvious once someone like me points them out to you. And all the forces on the building above all end up being taken just by four massive columns. So with these columns dotted around the perimeter that the designers didn't really have a choice over in the first place, they decided to design the rest of the building with what's called an exoskeleton to support the floors above which sits nicely above the columns and in this case you can see it as a crisscross lattice stainless steel frame that is completely different to the average building and makes it quite distinctive and at the time I think they called it a celebration of structure. Anyway, so rather than having internal columns running up and down the building, the loads on each floor are transferred outwards to the perimeter straight into the exoskeleton. The main advantage of this is you end up with a building with no internal columns which companies really like so offices can be designed to suit any style open plan, individual offices, whatever orientation it means you can put meeting rooms where you want nothing is in the way and everything is totally flexible and by coincidence because this building has been recently refurbished some of the offices at the time of filming are still available to rent and you can see it on right move would you believe. So if you're interested in renting a floor in the middle of the city of London you can see a tour of the inside which is interesting and really highlights how column free each floor is. But there's one fundamental risk of having your structure exposed and that is fire. All building designs need to give protection to the occupants if there's a fire and there's a lot of ways this is done by choosing the right materials, having suitable fire exits etc but the fundamental thing you must have if there's a fire is for the building not to collapse on you too quickly before everyone is evacuated. This is called structural fire resistance and fire ratings for buildings here in the UK differ depending on the type, height and use of a building but for a building like this over 30 meters high it will usually be two hours so the challenge is to make sure your main structural elements exposed in a potential fire last at least two hours before the whole thing collapses 
So, with our steel structure here completely exposed, how did the designers manage to ensure that the steel would survive for at least two hours to get this building signed off? This is where the water comes in. What the average passerby to this building in Cannon Street doesn't know is that each of these structural stainless steel members are tubes and in fact hollow and filled with water. If you look closely you can actually see the small pipes that feed water into them at the bottom. So the whole structure is filled with many hundreds of litres of water all around, top to bottom, all of it absolutely full. So why does filling these pipes with water actually help? Let's go back to the workshop and I'll show you why. More of a bunker really rather than the workshop. Anyway, somewhere that I can do a bit of an experiment on my version of the exoskeleton, which I've made here out of traditional copper central heating pipe with a filling point at the top here, which means I can fill it with water and see how the pipes react being heated up without water and full of water. It's more of a comparison rather than an exact experiment, but it will show us some sort of comparison between the two. Right, let me get this thermal imaging camera set up and on and get on with the experiment. So I think what I'm going to do is, because I don't know exactly the amount of energy I'm putting in to any of this, I'm going to hold the flame to it for a certain number of seconds and then see how it cools down with the water and without the water. So let's get on without the water first of all. So here goes. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I can see on the infrared it's pretty hot and it's still pretty red I wouldn't want to touch that at the moment that's red hot I can feel the heat coming off of it this is still totally cool at the top here that's a bit warmer and obviously it's warm down here and although copper is conductive, it's not really sort of taking away the heat particularly well. Let's fill it with water and see if there's a difference. So essentially everything's cooled down. So we're at the same starting point as we were just now. Let's fire this up and see what happens. One, eight, nine, ten. Well, that's interesting. I can't see any red on the infrared at all. It looked like as soon as I took the flame away, it cooled down. Let's see what it's feeling. Well, it's warmer at the top. I suppose that's where the water has taken the heat away. And only after a few seconds, I can actually hold where I've been heating it up. How bizarre is that? And the coolest is obviously the bottom. Well, that I'm surprised about. The water takes away the heat from the area incredibly efficiently. The only thing I would say, it means that the top is really warm and the bottom is cold, just like a radiator. But if you had a circulation system that just pumped it around, you could really dissipate any heat in one area across the whole frame quite nicely. What I noticed when I heated it up just now was how much the water actually expanded. So quickly. I mean, you can control it going up and down. Well, I never knew that. I obviously know that heating up water makes it expand, but not to that much. You can see why you've got expansion tanks on your central heating system. So that is pretty conclusive. That really does show how the water takes away any heat from one part of the structure and helps that structure in a fire keep itself nice and cool so it doesn't collapse. So that is pretty conclusive. I think back to Cannon Street. So just like my copper pipe, this lattice work of water filled stainless steel tubes will dissipate the heat away in the event of a fire and keep the steel cool enough to still be structurally sound for at least two hours. So the occupants can escape and the fire brigade can turn up with all their bells and whistles going and do their stuff. 
and as a Jubilee line extension that never ended up coming through this way, years after completion, the empty ground floor section that was being left free for the station entrance was filled in and now houses a boots, which is not really very useful for a quick tube ride to Canary Wharf, but handy if you want a meal deal at lunchtime, I suppose. So if you're ever around Cannon Street in the City of London, now you know why the building is unique and looks the way it does, and how water running through this structure has helped satisfy the structural fire resistance requirements. And that's why number 80 has been allowed to operate to city companies for over 50 years. Now that's what I call proper engineering. <laughs>